and start with the circuiting. Uh, I'm going to say brain circuits here. Brain circuits. Our topic, my friends, is going to be the brain circuits for the day. And for the brain circuits, to help me with the brain circuits, the code talk about brain circuits in 210 for low voltage. So this is most of the stuff is from 210, article 210, NEC. Okay, before I start, guys, I'm going to talk about, but we talk about brain circuits many times. And we talk about brain circuits, though, from a three phase point of view. So here's what you need to understand fully when you have a brand circuit from a three phase point of view. Um, this is phase, uh, phase uh, A, phase B, phase C. And I'm going to have my neutral, oops, green. My neutral is coming over here. And this is my neutral. And this is first what we call the three phase transformer, your start point. We're circuiting with a three-phase system like this. That's doing brand circuit with a system three-phase. Um, this is a Y system, three-phase Y grounded system. That's the, because if you go to a delta, slightly different. Three-phase Y grounded system. This system, guys, the one that we're going to be using, it's a 208 slash 120 volt. It's a Y, right? As you can see, it's a Y, and it's also grounded. Grounded. It's a Y grounded. Um, I'm not showing it grounded here, so I'm going to go here and drive it to Mother Earth. 90% 90, 90 of a commercial building will have a service like this 28120 or 480277. Everybody knows the, the start point at least, what my start point is. This is my start point. This is my start point. And just a quick reminder that the voltage between any phases is 120, any phase and the neutral is 120 volt, volt, any phase and the neutral is 120 volt, and the voltage between any two phases is 208, and from here to here is 208, and from here to here is 208. I want to make sure that you fully understand that this is how the system works. You have two voltages, 1 to 1 to 8, 120. This is the basic, basic understanding. Okay, so how do you do grand circuit with, with a system like this? We're going to group them, and we're going to move in three-phase circuits. You're going to hear Chad talking about moving in three-phase circuits to power light, receptacles, and equipment. We're going to move. Every time you circuit with a system like this, guys, always, Chris, in your mind, I'm going to be pulling three hots and a neutral coming between them. And equipment ground conductor, 99% of the time, will be the pipe, EMT. So always think when you move with a system like this, you're moving with four conductors, moving with three hots and a neutral. Multi-wire brand circuits. Always think multi-wire brand circuits. Okay, the, the three types of loads that you can connect to this system, guys, there are three types of loads you can connect to this system. One major five. This is three phase, 208, and this one you can go straight from here, and straight from here, and straight from here. That's three phase um, system, three phase motor, three phase machines, right? Very easy. The second system that we do is single phase, 208. This system, you take two, any two, any two phases, any two phases, and, and you hook to any two phases. Does that make sense? Hook, hook into any two phases. And the last system that you can is a single phase, baby. Single phase 120 system. These are volts, volts. And in this case, you take any phase and a neutral. I'm going to take um, any phase and a neutral. Here's my neutral. Um, taking my neutral all the way down here and taking my phase from here to here. Any neutral and any phase. Does that make sense? Where I went any uh, any phase with any neutral, give you a single phase. These are the three types of loads you connect. Can you, does it make sense first? Above each one of them, you're going to write, when you put circuit breakers, this will have a three-pole. When you tie this one, this will have a three-pole circuit breaker. Right? Because you have three hots. Make sense? Three-pole circuit breaker. 
this one will have two pole circuit breaker, right? Makes sense? Because you are taking only two hots to that baby. This one is going to have single pole circuit breaker. Everybody knows what a pole, by the way, right? When we see a single pole, this one right here, and I'm going to turn it and turn that thing off now. Any one of these is a single pole. So when I say two pole, two of them tied together with, a, with an approved handle. Three pole, three of them together. Make sense? These are, I hate to say it, I know we repeat it ourselves, guys. These are concepts, if you don't understand, we get very confused when it comes to commercial. The circuit breaker that we use, any question about this? Any question? The last thing I'm going to show is the, uh, the conductors. Every time I'm going to group these conductors here, every time you have three phase, you are talking about three conductors. I'm going to see C4 conductors just for the heck of it. You guys will get that. I need three conductors. For this system, I need two conductors. And for this system, I need two conductors. Why do I care about conductors? You guys are going to be putting conductors in conduits. Very important to understand how the three system works. Three conductors. Am I counting the ground? No. Why don't I count the ground? Because 99% of the time, guys, if you're using a cable, the ground comes with the cable. And if you're using a conduit, it's an EMT, and you're pulling uh, um, the, the shell of the EMT is your grounding conductor. These are just... Either the two phases, or the phase in neutral, or the three phases. Any question guys about this? This is very, very important to understand when you do branch circuits in any building. Make sense? No? Very, very important. Now I know Chris and I talked about grouping. I'm going to tell you, when does it make sense to group circuits? Take this, Ashley. I have, you're looking on the, on the board, or oh, how many circuits do I have? I have three circuits in the board. Right now, you're looking at three circuits. Three brand circuits. One brand circuit is a three phase. The second brand circuit is single phase two hot. And the third brand circuit is single phase one hot. You are looking at three brand circuits. Does everybody know when I have a three brand circuits? The first one is called the brand circuit three phase. The second one is called the brand circuit single phase two hot, not two phase, single phase two hot. And the third one is called single phase, um, single phase. One hot in this case. So I'm looking at three phase circuits. My question for you is when does it make sense to put all these wires in one pipe as we pull them through the, the building? That's what I'm going to go to the next slide. Because now, now we know how to circuit them. You put them in a in a panel schedule, no problem. Everybody will go through how to size the conductors and so forth in a second. But when does it make sense to group them, take them out of this panel with one conduit? or one multi-conductor cable, and when does it make sense to group them? That's what I'm gonna do in the next slide before I do the circuiting, because, because that's gonna affect how we circuit, how we size the circuiting. Are we grouping or are we not grouping? 99% of the time, if you're doing commercial guys, you're grouping, because if, not, you know what not grouping is? You know what not grouping? Not grouping is have, having one conduit for these three conductors, another conduit for these two conductors, and a third conduit for these two conductors. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the smallest conduit EMT you can buy is half an inch. So you got yourself into, depending on the size, minimum three conduits, half an inch each. Could I put the three of them in one conduit, three quarter of an inch, and save myself a lot of money? Yes, and that's exactly what we do. Any question guys about grouping? Everybody understand at least the big picture of how the system is connected before we go into uh, grouping them? And, brand, and size the brand circuit. And you're going to see a lot of size of brand circuit makes sense, guys. It's not new to you. It's just putting the whole big picture together. So I have one brand circuit, three phase, one brand circuit, <clears throat> two phase, um, um, one phase, two hot, one brand circuit, one phase, single phase, one hot. Any comment? Any comments? Any questions? By the way, I'm not showing the panel here, but you can imagine that the service conductor is coming in here to a panel and we're feeding all these loads from the panel. Could be the main panel, could be the sub panel, doesn't matter. Any question guys about this? Panel still one standard or they expand? The, 
standard as a, most of us are used to seeing residential panels where you basically I'll show you how the columns of breakers you will have two rows of columns of breakers except I'll show you how they do in a second <laughs> any question guys about this system first for the branch circuit to understand it take this I'm going to take our project as an example guys the power system that you guys have done you've done you will have an X former this is your transformer you're going to come to um, a main panel, I'm just showing the riser here, a receptacle panel and a lighting panel. And this is the, the grid here. I'm just showing how the system comes so we have the big picture. So, and I'm coming from here into the main panel, out of the main panel from here to, this is my lighting panel, this is my receptacle panel, this is my main panel, and that's what you guys have done with me so far, right? And don't forget that the transformer is sitting outdoor. Right? This is what we call the riser. And we're going to add more to the riser. But as of now, your riser, what you did with me is we have a transformer sitting outside. We didn't size it yet. That's Excel's job. We brought the power to the building to a, a panel we call a main panel. From the panel, we went underground. When we are inside the building, <clears throat> by the way, this is out. This area is out. And this will make, this is what? 10. So when we got inside the building, we went with above ground. 99% of the time when you guys do that, if you're under the building, you're using PVC. When you're over here, conduit-wise, you're using EMT. 99% of the time. Okay, so that's your riser. Now what I'm going to be doing in the next slide, guys, I'm going to be looking at the branch circuit that's coming out of the main panel or the lighting panel or the branch or the receptacle panel. The same calculation. doesn't matter where, they, where they're coming from. Calculation is still the same. Why do we split them there? Like this, based on function. Easy, grouping them, easy maintaining them. Re receptacle panel? No, the machine uh, machine. Mechanical panel. In our project, we don't have a mechanical panel. If the project is bigger, there will be a mechanical panel, a UPS panel, multiple other panels. In our project, all the mechanical equipment, the major mechanical equipment, if you look at the spec, says feed them from the main panel. The, little, the, the smaller mechanical equipment, we're going to feed them from the receptacle panel, if that makes sense. Thank you so much for checking the camera. Thank you for getting this. <clears throat> Any question guys about this? At least how the big picture is. So what I'm going to do next, Rob, I'm going to dive into the lighting panel, the receptacle panel, and just size different different branch circuit. One branch circuit of each type. Then you guys will get the get the hang of it. To help me with this, I'm going to be grabbing mechanical equipment from this sheet, guys, when I reach the mechanical and lighting lighting circuit. So any question about the big picture, how the system, I want to make sure that everybody understand how the big picture is put together with these branch circuits and, and how, uh, how the panels are tied together. You guys have sized, um, so far, you sized the equipment for me, and we came up with close to 500 amp here. The receptacle panel was 100 amp, and uh, I would say 200 amp here, right? We came up something close to this, 200, that's... The sizes, right? You guys did them, didn't you? Uh, Tau, didn't you guys came up with 200? Yeah. Receptacle, uh, lighting panel. Okay, so these are the, don't stick with these. If you came up with something different, write it down. So it, uh, okay, now let's go to the brand circuits. Directly to my brand circuits. Before I go to the brand circuits, I always want you to understand the concept of grouping. Grouping. Grouping means you grab a conduit right here from the receptacle panel. That concept of grooving, um, grab a conduit right coming up from here. That conduit, most of the time, is going to be a three quarter of an inch conduit. This is what grooving that I'm talking about. I go into the receptacle panel and I'm going to take a three quarter of an inch conduit, typically used and pull branch circuit conductors inside this conduit, if that makes sense. So I don't want to go 
take my conductors inside this conduit, there will be multiple conductors going different directions. Okay? Does that make sense? I went to the receptacle panel right here, and I put a three quarter of an inch conduit up to the ceiling and went through conduits in the ceiling to go feed, go feed what chair? Well, I can feed receptacles, I can feed lights, or I can feed equipment. Any question there's about that little conduit at the top that's going to feed branch circuits? Makes sense, the grooving? All right, let's go tell you when does it make sense to make grooving and how it's going to affect your circuit. Okay, typical. All I'm going to tell you is opinion and typical. Circuiting. And grooving. Okay, here's my my two senses on that one. Grooving. When it comes to circuit and grooving, guys, first of all, group group all receptacle uh, circuits. Number two, all lighting circuits. So all receptacle circuits, you should groove them. You shouldn't send a conduit, guys, that's carrying two conductors, if you can, if you have. So groove all the receptacles and groove all the lighting circuits. Can I groove all of them in one conduit? I mean, depending on how many conductors and so forth. Yes, you can put uh, lights and receptacle circuits in one conduit. The second thing that I like to do is all equipment circuits 20 amp or less. That's when I start grooving. Any equipment circuit that's fit from a 20 amp or less, groove it. For example, I have a printer there. I need a branch circuit dedicated for this printer. That's need 20 amp circuit, two conductors, number 12. Should I put a conduit and send the conduit directly to this, or should I grab these two conductors, put them in a conduit with the receptacle and the lighting panel and the lighting? Yes. Groove them together in, in, a, in the same conduit, if you can. Does that make sense? Anything higher than 20 amps, mechanical equipment, in my humble opinion, put a dedicated conduit to that load. Okay? We'll talk about this one. So 20 amp or less, or number 12 conductors. Number 12 conductors. If it's wired with number 12 conductors, Google it. Google it. Okay, so these are a few things about grooving. Grooving them. Is based on this rock, can I group the conductors that's feeding the air handling unit that's going to have number 10 conduct, number 10 or 8? Can I group that? Should I group? Can I? Yes. Should I? No. Air handling unit, dedicated conduit, dedicated feeder. Anything higher than number 12, my humble opinion. Anything conductor was higher than number 12. So that would give you 10, 8, you name it. Dedicated circuit with conduit. It's a good idea, good maintenance idea. If the, if the equipment guys need a 10 conductor or larger, this means it's a big boy equipment, and this means it's an important equipment. This means we need to separate it from other uh, conductors for maintenance, troubleshooting, reliability, and so forth. Could you please write this next to the CSK, Chad's opinion? So if somebody tells you otherwise, um, you don't say, well, who is the idiot who told you this? Just opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion in the in the in the world, right? Let's see what's the best way of grooving now. We know what to groove now. How do I groove? What's the best way of grooving? Because that author was jumping around and grooving and how do you groove? Here's what you're going to the best way of grooving. So these are circuiting and grooving. Second one, typical grooving. By the way, everybody knows what we mean, grooving. We grab multiple conductors, put them in one conduit. That's what grooving is. Typical grooving. Here's what I think typical grooving should look so like. There's multiple modes, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, there's absolutely. There's one mode, there have to have multiple conductors. Yes. Here's, here's what I think grooving should look like. Here's the J-box. J-box. Four by four square J-box, typical. You put it in the ceiling. 
And typical grouping, typical, don't hold me accountable to this one. You use three quarter of an inch. You're using three, all these conduits are three quarter of an inch. And from right here, I'm just gonna use the um, receptacle panel, for example, um, just uh, typical. And this is coming directly from here, receptacle panel. Okay, here's my, this is my receptacle panel. So grouping means <clears throat> typical grouping. I take three quarter of an inch EMT. All these are three quarter of an inch EMT. Three quarter of an inch EMT. Three quarter of an inch EMT. This is a typical grouping. I grab a three quarter of an inch conduit from here all the way to the center here from the gear box and from this gear box go short to go this way to go feed multiple loads here the other way i'm showing three ways here but you can take probably four six ways out of this gear box and if you need more ways what do you do another gear box any question guys this is a typical grouping Con grouping with conduits why emt 99 percent of the time guys when we wire visit a commercial we're wearing with emt we're above ground, we're empty. Any question about this typical grouping? The reason why I start with this, because that's my typical grouping. The second thing is how many conductors am I, the maximum number of conductors I want to group, right? That's typical. If I know the typical grouping is with three quarter of an inch to uh, 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 four by four, this is a four by four square box, deep or shallow, mostly deep square box, four by four inch square box. If I know this is how I'm going to group, the second question would be how many conductors am I going to fit so I can go circuit them? How many conductors am I going to fit? Any question about this concept? This is the receptacle panel. This also could be the lighting panel, could be the mechanical panel, could be any panel. Am I clear? I'm showing the receptacle panel, but really I can take this conduit from any panel with three quarter of an inch, fill it with how many conductors is coming and going to different directions to feed. <clears throat> Any question as about this? So now we know the typical conduit they're going to go. Now, can I take uh, an inch? Yeah, you can. When would I take an inch conduit and go? An inch in my book is when you're going to a dedicated handling unit, dedicated board. Two inch um, a chiller, big chiller that need conductor size two inch, dedicated load. Does that make sense? But for all the lighting receptacles, all the things that you can group, all the receptacles, all the lights and all the equipment that you can fit in a 20 amp circuit. This is what I think, my humble opinion, if you're using conduit, this is how you should group them. Typically. Now I'm sure Ra, um, Phil is sitting there saying, well, we don't use conduit, we use cables. Be my guess. Now if you use cables, the only thing, 99% of the cable, if you use MC cable guys in three phase, you're running with a four conductor cable. So four conductor, how many circuits you can pull out of four conductor? Three circuits with a neutral. That's then then you have no option. If you're not if you're doing cables, then we're just bringing the cables right here, right, right here. And the only grouping that you're doing, we're you right really, you're not doing any grouping. You're just going three phase conductor, uh, three con phases with a neutral. <clears throat> here we're gonna have multiple phases. You're gonna see in a second here. Cool. Any question guys about the grouping? So if I ask you, all the people now, we have an air handling unit. Should I group the air handling unit with the other conductors? You can, not a good idea. You can, then you end up, you might end up with a, an inch and a half EMT conduit and you put an in, conductors and then you get into derating and you get into a whole lot of mess. The reason why I like this grouping because you're gonna see when we derate, it, it makes a lot of sense to use this grouping. Any question guys so far? Okay, let's go see. Now we know what conduits we're gonna be getting out of that box to feed these systems. And we know if the systems are not any of these, we're gonna give them a dedicated conduit. We said that. Now let's go how many conductors we can fit in that baby. Okay, so I'm gonna take the three quarter of an inch. My example, guys, the typical grouping is EMT three quarter of an inch. You go EMT three quarter of an inch, you go to Annex C switch table. It gives you 16 conductors, 16 conductors number 12T. 
THHM. Which table, though, uh, Chris? It's table five. And, and I want the, I want the annex annex C something C because they're all the same conductors so it's easier to use annex if you ask me this will be C1 if you go to C1 C.1 um, annex double M chair I think I need an English class annex Annex C one page seven four four seven four four and PC document for NEC twenty eleven. So for those of us who are not using twenty eleven. Okay. If you guys write, did you check first? Sixteen conductors here, check, check. Okay. This is my start point, Ashley. My start point, if you guys look at the conduit. My start point, the conduit that I'm coming out of that panel, my start point, if I'm using three quarter of an inch, which the typical, I don't want to use half an inch too small, an inch is too big, three quarter is the, just the right size, right? Um, then my start point here, then I'm limited to how many conductors in that conduit, maximum, not minimum, maximum, 16 conductors. Cool? Does it, see where I'm hitting? I'm hitting what's, if we groove, what's the typical grouping? What's the right way of grooving? 16, I will, Phil, does it make sense? Six, unlimited, no matter what I, much, how much I want to groove, I can't groove more than 16 conductors because in that conduit. Should I go to one inch? You can, but I think it's going to be a waste of time when you see two big conduits to groove. Okay, so three quarter of an inch. The second thing I want to, so we know that. Now we're moving in three phase. We're moving in three phase. How many three phase? Conductors I can carry with the 16, 16 conductors. So let's let's do it this way. I have number twelve. Look at this one here. Number twelve. I have sixteen of them. Okay. Now um, three phase circuits. Let me show you a typical three phase circuit. Here is one. Here is two. Here is three. And here is a neutral. How many conductors in a typical three-phase circuit? These are all 20 amp. These are all 20 amp. 20 amp. This is a typical three-phase circuit, 20 amp, multi-conductor. How many conductors do I need? Typical. Four, right? Does that make sense? How many conductors are here? Four. Four conductors. Now, how many circuits of this type can I carry with the 16 conductors? Four, thank you. I can carry four conductors. I don't know if you can see where I'm hitting now. It can tell you how many brand circuits you need to do. Okay? So just because I'm going to go draw them. Because here's one, two, three, and here's another one, two, three, and here's a third one, two, three. And don't forget my coming neutral. Here's one neutral with this, one neutral with this, one neutral with this. Here's a four, and here's another four. And a third, a fourth four. Does it make sense? With the 16 conductors, I can carry four three-phase circuits. Does it make sense, guys? Yeah. Ashley, Tal, does it make sense? Yeah. We decided. What, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So you see why we limited, first we started with the conduit, the best grouping, three quarter of an inch, easy to work with, not too big, not too small. Now we're going to see how many conductors we can fit in this conduit, right? We discovered 16 conductors. Why THHM, by the way? Why THHM? THHM is 99% of the time you're moving THHM inside the building, dry location. You know, now if you're outside the building, how many, how many brand circuit receptacle you have outside the building, really? <laughs> and lighting circuit, other than the parking lot. So 99% of the time, you're going to go THHM because we're dry location inside the building. Cool. Okay, so now here's my question for you. This is where, where it makes a lot of sense. So that's number 16 conductors. I know I can get uh, three circuits, four circuits like this. Now how many amps I can? Now I'm going to group them. Now, Ashley, I have a conduit. Here's what I'm going to have. All right, now I'm going to draw a conduit here. Here's my conduit. And outside this conduit, 
I'm going to have 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16. I have 16 conductors inside the conduit. And you guys, you can see, and this is all going through that conduit, right? All these conductors you're looking at are 16 conductors. Make sense? Inside one conduit, it fits? Cool. How much current can I carry out of these conductors under these circumstances? That's starting point for circuiting. That's your start point for circuiting. Right? Let's go do that. Everybody knows what I'm going to do with these four circuits. I group them in a three quarter of an inch. Now, Nick is going to tell me what are they feeding, Chad? They feed anything you want them to feed. They can feed receptacles, they can feed lights, or they can feed equipment as long as 20 amps or less. Remember that limit with the equipment we say 20 amps or less? Okay. So, uh, now how much current can I pull out of these circuits? By the way, all these circuits are 20 amp. This is 20 amp. This is also what, typical 20 amp. And this is also 20 amp. And Nick, do you see how I, I drew that line across these receptacles? This means they have to be tied together by code. By code, they have to be tied together. Why? Because they're multi wire bind circuit. multi wire bind circuit as of 2008 all multi-wire bright circuit had to be tied together. Before that, they, they used to allow you not to tie them. What do you mean by tie? The circuit Yeah, they have a tie between the circuit breakers. Oh, I don't have anyone. You see these little, there are holes in here. They put, they put a little tie between these two to tie together. So when they trip, they, or you, when you turn them off, they will turn together. So an, a pulled handle, I don't know if you come over here, there's holes here where you can buy that little handle and you tie these two together. Now they act like, almost act like one circuit breaker. Oh, okay, I thought you talked about the conductors themselves. No, 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 the circuit breaker, the handle of the circuit breaker. Okay. Yeah. I should have clarified myself. The handle, I don't have any one of these here. The handle of the circuit breaker, yes sir? Uh, most likely, depending on how, this is the, the question that always we argue. If one of them will short circuit with trip, would the others go? It, the, the answer is it depends upon how high the short circuit. If you have a dead bolt short circuit, it will take the three of them. It could take the three of them. But if you have, a, depending upon how high the short circuit, it could take take the three of them. Oh, what's the value of doing it? Yeah, because we lost reliability now, right? One of them tripped to the air down. Well, because people got burned and burning equipment in a multi-wire bind circuit. See, if they were not tied together and I'm working on this circuit here, I disconnect this circuit working on this equipment. Guess what? The neutral is still hot from the other two circuits. So people were zapped by current in the neutral because that neutral is operated by the three circuit breakers. If, if you turn one of them off, there will still be current in that neutral coming from the other two. So people were zapped, number one. <clears throat> And number two, we were burning equipment because people think because we turned one of them off, I can go and open that neutral. Oops. Not knowing that this neutral is shared by other two circuits. And like Chad did one time, you burn the fan. Open neutral. Remember the whole issue of the open neutral? Safety. Safety. You compromise a little bit on reliability, though, because now if one of them trip, the others could trip. But if I'm to work on any one of them, now I have to go there, turn it off, no, now they're completely dead, all of them, and the neutral is dead. Can Safe. you make a breaker that guarantees to go? Certain motors, I would assume that you want one of them to go. Ah, a breaker? Oh. Uh, now, can I put this in? This, these are all tied to a single phase, single phase, one hot loads. Now, can I tie this one to a three phase load? Not recommended. There is circumstances where you can, if the load, especially if the load is 2811. Yeah. Yes. Then you can buy a three pole circuit breaker. One big circuit breaker with three pole, with, with one handle. It just goes with the three of them. Oh, okay. So that's. that's yeah. Different. If the load is three phase, most likely you're running with a, one circuit breaker, three phase, three pole, one circuit breaker. That's a typical. Though I can use these under certain, certain circumstances of three phase load. Any question, guys, about these? Now let's see how much current can I pull out of these conductors, right? I know, I know two things out of these. 
I know if it's continuous load, how much current you can pull out of a continuous load out of any of these circuits. I want somebody to tell me right here. Out of these circuits, any one of them, continuous. Thank you. Why 16 amps? Because continuous load, the code says if it's continuous load, the circuit breaker cannot be, circuit breakers cannot be loaded more than 80% of their rating. So under normal condition, normal operating condition, under normal operating conditions, normal operating condition, I am pulling 16 amps here, 16 amps here, 16 amps here. Why 16 amps? Because the rating of, the, if it's continuous load, the rating is 80% of the circuit breaker, right? Everybody knows why the 16 amps? For each one of them, the rating, you cannot pull a continuous load out of a circuit breaker more than 80% of it unless the circuit breaker is rated for 100% operation, which these guaranteed now. Okay? Are you guys with me? 16 amps, each one of them. You can see that they're going to take 16 amps, 16, 16, 16. You can see a lot of power being sucked out of in one conduit. 16 amps, 16 amps. Cool. That's if they were all in one conduit, though. They're, that's if, or if they all, I mean, if each four of them in one conduit, that's how much I can pull. What happens if I group them? We're going to go group. So I'm going to group them. This is the calculation I'm going to do when I group them. So you're saying 16 if they were each in their own? Yes. Group. Yes. 16 yeah, if they were. Yeah. Now we put them together in one. Mm -hmm. 16 is normal operating condition. Normal operating condition for a conductor is if it's three carrying carry conductors in one conduit. If I group them all together, do I have a normal operating condition for this system? No, I'm grouping them. So I'm going to go see if I group them like Chad said, how much current am I going to lose? Take this. Let's take a 12, number 12. Take it to 310.15, B16 under 90 degree. Why 90 degree? When I derate THHN, where do I go? T H H N, right? T H H N. Press 30. 30 amps. 30 amps. So Ashley, number 12 can carry 30 amps under 90 degree could degree for derating purposes. For derating purposes. Okay. Well, let's go derate that baby and see how much we can get out of it, right? I can't start with the 30 unless I'm derating. Step number one is to find how much current that beautiful number 12 conductor can carry for me. 30 amps. Take the second step. If you go, take, um, how many, by the way, how many carry, carry conductor in this system? Look at it. 12. Okay, 12 is one answer. The good answer is 12. But if these are all lighting circuit feeding harmonics like these, which could be all of these circuits, the 12 circuits here, our lighting feeding harmonics, the neutral, will count as a carrying carrying conductor. That's the worst scenario. So how many carrying carrying conductor do we have here then? Thank you, 16. Could we have 12? Yes. What's the worst scenario? All these uh, circuits that you're looking at are lighting circuits feeding ballast, ballast uh, uh, fixtures like these, which typically what we do. <laughs> then they're going to be heavily in harmonics. If they are heavy in harmonics, what are you going to do with the neutral? Count it as a carrying carrying conductor. So, because of this, I have 16 carrying carrying conductor. Take this one. Press which table that one? 310.15. The derating B. You're going by. So, this is B38. B3. A or B? B three A. If you guys take the sixteen carrying conductors under these circumstances, you're gonna find what's the derating factor, Phil? 0. 0.5? 0. 0.5, thank you. The derating factor, then from here the derating factor is 0. 0.5 and uh, 0. 0.5. Or fifty percent. I'm gonna say the derating factor is fifty. Oops. As fifty we can dot Give it to me one more time. I'm sorry. Three ten dot fifteen B. 
3A. 3A, thank you. 3A. From there, you can find its 50% derivative factor. Here's where I'm coming to. So then you take your 30 amps and multiply it by 0.5, and what do you get? 15 amps. Maybe this is the most important secret that we came up with. After I group them, after I group them, all together, how many amps have I lost from what they normally can carry? One amp. Does it make sense now to group them? Yes. The only amps, after I grouped 16 of them, guys, in one conduit, 16 in one conduit, right? 16 in one conduit. How many amps have I lost? One amp. One amp. See why I went through the whole running around to get you in the 15 amps. And it does it now, Rob, does it make sense to group in this case? If I'm only losing one amp in a 20 amp circuit, yeah, no. If I'm losing five amps, now take this. You go group, you see why I chose three quarter of an inch? Take an inch now, take an inch and fill that baby with uh, <clears throat> God knows how many, a 24. A number two of conductor and do the derating, you might lose four amps. Now, four or five amps on a 16 amp, that's a big substantial amount. It doesn't make sense to group them. It doesn't make sense. You can, but it's not a good idea to group them. That's the key point is yes, I can group them. No problem. Does it make sense? No. Any question, guys, about this? See where I'm heading towards the branch circuits? Now, actually, all these could be lighting circuits. All these could be receptacle circuits. It could be a mixture of lights and receptacle. They could be equipment circuits, motors, and all the stuff. As long as, in my humble opinion, as long as the conductors are number 12 and the overconfliction device is a 20 amp. What, whatever load, it doesn't matter what you're feeding. Group them. Doesn't matter what you feed them. Group them. As long as you are, you're using number 12 and 20 amp met. By the way, do we use number 14? If Moving on, if I hear Rob, you, my friend, saying number 14, I will pick a fight with you at the end of the parking lot. I'm not going to win, but I'll take my chance. So a number 14 conductor and 15 amps, Ashley, you open that window and bundle them and throw them out. Don't use the word number 14 and don't use the word number 15 amps in a commercial building. It's not worth, it's not worth circuiting with 15 amps. Can I use them? Yes. Is it worth pulling a 15 amp circuit for lights and receptacles in a commercial building? No. No. Is it worth putting a number 14 conductor in a commercial building from a voltage drop point of view? We haven't talked about voltage drop yet. No. Minimum conductor commercial building is number 14. Minimum overconfliction device commercial building is 15 amps. For lights and receptacle and move on. Okay. Can you... I did all this, guys, to prove to you that what we have done, the grouping, makes sense. Unlike the book that we had, uh, Chris, he started grouping and all this stuff, and okay, does it really make sense to group their handling unit with, with this and that? It might not make sense. Here's where it makes sense to group them. Anything 20 amp, number 4 to 12, group. Anything higher than that, don't. It depends on whether you're looking at material or lights. Yeah. There's two very discrete angles. Yeah. And then throw safety into the mix. The optimum, I, I always say the optimum design. The optimum design takes into consideration the price of the material, the labor, and um, um, uh, the uh, maintenance on the equipment. So that's, you, you're going to balance all this. In my humble opinion, that's where it makes sense. Now, is this the only way? I, I, I claim not. I was saying how it affects the attitude of whoever was writing the suggestion. Yeah. If I'm a contractor or if I'm an engineer, now if the engineer said, no, I want every three phase circuit in one conduit, I'm an engineer and my humble opinion will be a waste of money. But I will do it if I'm the contractor, Phil. Tie the horse where the owner of the horse wants you to tie it. The owner might be not the smartest bulb in the tree, but he's the owner though. Any question guys about this? Okay. This is to prep you guys when we have five minutes break to prep you to do in the calculation. Now, I want you to take one thing from all this. This is going to be my max on the branch circuits for receptacles 
and also on the branch circuit for, for lights and also equipment. So moving forward, I'm going to look at the receptacle and I say I'm going to be limited to how many amps? 15 amps. How many limited I'm going to, on, the, on the light? 15 amps. And size based on these 15 amps. Why 15 amps? Because I know I'm going to be grooving them. Okay, so we have five minutes. <clears throat> Is it? Okay. Okay, let me, uh, as of now, we, I'm going to go circuit now. I want to write a disclaimer here. What I usually do, guys, I take one of these circuits, a lot of people take one of these circuits and make a future. So what does that mean? A lot of people take one of these circuits and make a future, meaning when I load my pipe, I load it with 12 conductors instead of 16 conductors. Why? Why? For future expansion, I'm allowing them to stick another four conductors to go somewhere else. It's an idea. If here's one way of doing it. The other way that I like personally is why don't you stick a pipe from, from here, empty pipe, all the way to the ceiling. Most of the ceiling are accessible. And just let this pipe sit there in a box. And that will be your future expansion. Whenever you need anything, you pull the pipe into one of these boxes and continue with the system. But some people might throw one circuit like this, say, you know what, I'm going to load this pipe only with 12 conductors, which give me three three-phase circuits, which give me nine circuits, nine 20-amp circuits. Um, and the, the second one is future. Cool? Everybody can see that I have here, I have 12 20-amp branch circuits. Everybody can see that I have 12 in the whole system. I have 12 20 amp brand circuits. What does that mean? I have, I, I, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I can put more than two thirds, more than two thirds of this panel in one three quarter of an inch. That's powerful. Does that make sense? Just give the gravity of what we're, what we're trying to do. When you put eight, 12 of these brands, the circuits, all the conductors that come out of them in three quarter of an inch. I think that's powerful. So keep this in mind. There is, so I'm going to summarize here just to put right somewhere here that we have 12 in this system here. This system will give me 12, um, 12, 20 amp branch circuit, right? Based on this, we, I can have 12 20 amp branch circuits. Are you with me? If you decided for future expansion, drop one of these three phase circuits, that'll give you nine branch circuits, right? I'm going to start with the 12 branch circuits right into three quarter of an inch. And let's go based on this. Here's what I drew for you guys I have my mechanical panel. Lighting panel, receptacle panel, and I just put brand circuits in them so I can show you how we're going to size. Example, one example. I'm not going to do all of them. One example. I want to get back to these and size one example for each one of them. One example. Okay? So I'm going to start with the receptacles because these are the most common ones. Now, I want to remind you guys, all these are 20 amp circuits. All these are 20, 20, 20, 20 amp. All of them are 20 amp, 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 and 20 amp. All these are 20 amp circuits that I'm pulling. Now, can I pull more? Yeah, but we're kind of, we're focusing on anything 20 amp or less. Higher than 20 amp is easy, guys, because we'll see in a second here. Any question before I move to the first type of receptacles, circuits, a branch circuit? How, how many receptacles can I fit in a branch circuit in a commercial building? Isn't that a legit question that you guys are going to be doing in Revit? How many receptacles chair do you want us to put in a circuit? Right? Let's do the calculation, come up with what the code says and what the designer recommendation says. There are two things here. Okay. So I'm going to start with the type number one. I'm going to call it type number one, guys. Number one is receptacle. Circuits. 
and everybody knows that we are separating the receptacle circuits from the lighting circuits, from the equipment circuits, right? We, we, we don't take a circuit from here to feed this lighting fixture, Ashley, and this receptacle down there, and, an, and, and, uh, and a fan in the, in the end. You can, if you size it right, bad design, bad idea. Cheap, I can do it, can make it work, if this, uh, based on the amps, not a good idea, not a good design. Okay, so receptacle circuits only feed receptacles. Here's what I want you guys to do. The first thing I want, I want to do is the calculation, I'm going to call it A here, as um, general receptacles, general receptacles. Here's the calculation for general receptacles. Uh, you're going to take, but everybody knows that we're dealing with the 20 amp circuits, by the way. We are dealing with how many? 20 amp branch circuits. We are only concentrate, focusing, not 15, not more than all 20 amp circuits, receptacles. Take this, take the 20 amp, multiply it by 120, divide it by 180. What do you get? That's the maximum that you can get if you do that. On uh, That will get you uh, 19. I'm sorry, 13. That will get you 13 amps. 13. I call this is the max. The maximum receptacles you can put in a 20 amp circuit is 13. And I'm assuming, I didn't multiply this by 0.8, Ashley, because receptacles are considered non-continuous. That's why I can almost load it to the max. You're going to see I don't do that in a commercial. I don't, don't, don't. I don't do it. That's a max. So keep in mind, as you go through, don't ever exceed the max. Now let's go to the recommendation and design. That's a max. And where does the 180 came to be? All the receptacles, you guys were calculating everything at 180, right? So we're assuming every receptacle, duplicate receptacle, is considered 180. Okay, so these are 13 receptacles like these, duplicate receptacles. Okay. Now, let's see how about how about in an office area? If you're in an office area, here's the recommendation. What I'm going to write now is recommendation only. You can take it or leave it. Recommendation only. You can take it or leave it. Now, design. Design. From a design point of view, cut this by half, 50%. Where does that 50% came to be? From Chad Curtis basement. No code, nothing. Really. Design, cut that number by 50%. You're in a commercial building. Equipment are used much more often, okay? So if you cut this by 50%, you times this by 13, what do you get? Anything fraction, drop it, because you can't have half of a receptacle. So how many receptacles you can? Six receptacles. I like that baby here. We're in an office building. You're not gonna wire more than six receptacles to a circuit. Now you're gonna find in our spec guys, they ask you three receptacles to a circuit. No problem, do it. But no more than six receptacles in an office area to a circuit. If in, in our spec, they're telling you in certain areas to put three receptacles to a circuit, stick with the spec. Stick with, they tell you otherwise in our spec, do it. But if you're doing a project, don't put more than six duplicate receptacles on a circuit. Are you stipulating that for all of them or just certain? No, there's certain areas. You, they have a note number two next to them. Um, mainly that they call them technology receptacles. Technology receptacle, guys, is the one that when you sit in your cubicles, you're tying a laptop like this. Now, how much power a laptop like this? I guarantee you less than 180 volt amp. This receptacle, less than 180 volt amp. But there's so many of them, though. You can plug so many things. So we're assuming we're going to see how the max. Now, Rob, you go to a project and cheap customer, and they want to know the paper. They want the cheapest. How many you stick there? 13 and move on. Good design, six. Now, can I go somewhere in between? Yeah, you can go somewhere in between. Don't exceed the max. The good design is six and move on. Am I clear about this? So I'm gonna go back here, guys, if that makes sense. And in the receptacle circuit that I did here, this is my receptacle circuit. I'm gonna put one, two, three. I'm just gonna draw these. 20 amps, six receptacles. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go here, 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 here. Oops. And how many, what's the size of the conductor here? Two conductors, number 12. Done. 
is all my receptacles. Okay, this is my receptacle, six of them. Just visual. Okay, so I got 20 amp, number 12 conductors going to the receptacle. Any question? Type one, type two. Let's take, let's talk about how about um, equipment. For example, how about vending machine? There's a vending machine in your room. Equipment plugged in a circuit, as in, um, how am I going to say that? Like vending machine, when they say equipment. Um, vending machine, if you know there will be a vending machine in one area. If you know there will be a, dry, a dryer or a washing machine or um, in one area. I call these equipment. These you, you put individual dedicated circuit. Cool? So what I'm going to write right now underneath there, I'm going to call these are equipment plug. I'm going to say equipment, though it's plug, plugged in, plugged in equipment. Did I spell plugged in right? Plugged in equipment, the one that you plug in. Example, let's take an example. Example, vending, vending machine. Machine, um, dishwasher, dishwasher. Um, in an office, in an office area, guys, a printer, plotter, they're telling you, these are all dedicated. A plotter, printer, uh, give me the other example. That area is uh, coffee pot. Thank you. Coffee pot. Coffee pot. All these we know by manufacturer. They want these equipment, and we know where they are, right? So these you're going to have something called dedicated circuit. 20 amp, one circuit per equipment. Okay. So I'm going to have. I want to say 20 amp individual. We call them N. Spill the rest of it. Individual circuits. <laughs> individual circuits. So what does that mean, Chad? Each one of these is going to have its own circuit. Individual 20 amp circuits. Am I clear about this? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to have a brand circuit 20 amp for each. For each. Done. Don't mess around with them. Ashley, five vending machines sitting side by side right here. Five circuits. Okay. You could pick two and one. Not a good idea. Individual equipment, 20 amp circuit, individual circuits. Am I clear about this? Cool. All right, let's go back to my example. I'm going to use, um, uh, for example, vending machine here. Oops. And just show one of them. So I have just one example right from this. I have my vending machine. Dedicated circuit with what's the conductor size? Number 12. How many? Two. Vending machine. Dedicated circuit. 20 amp. By the way, how many poles are these? These are one pole, 20 amp. Dedicated circuits. Any, oops, any question guys about this? So I got my vending machine, the equipment. Um, and by the way, I wanted to call these actually B in terms of receptacles. B. First one are receptacles general. This one is, we know that they will be plugged in, but there is dedicated equipment for that. Any question as about this? Would that help when you know dedicated, they call them individual circuit, individual circuit to these equipments? When you're taking a run of receptacles, you stick with the three quarter and you drop that down the half inch. Oh, when you drop down to the receptacle? Yeah. yeah. If you're doing a run along the Yeah, thank you. If I'm doing, now if I know I'm, I'm pulling, now well, that's where it's going to design. I'm, I know I, I only have one circuit going here, or two circuits, two circuits to feed the receptacle here. I will do half an inch. Okay. From the GFSI at the top, I'll go down and pull these with half an inch. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I'm talking about the, the three quarter of an inch first coming out of the panel to the first J box. From the first J box, to the other J box, I will continue running three quarter of an inch. Now, when I go drop to pick up things, you have two options. Either you drop by three quarter if it's so many of them, or you can drop by half an inch if it's only one, two circuits. Any questions guys about this? Any questions? The other thing, A, B, I'm going to say C here. C. 
figures is also areas. Um, areas like bath, room, um, outdoor, outdoor, um, what else? Uh, bathrooms, outdoor that come to my mind. Um, mechanical, mechanical room. All these areas, all these areas, like all the bathrooms, the outdoor receptacles, I like to put them in one dedicated surface. Okay? That's good design, individual surface. So these areas by area, I'm going to say here individual, individual surface. Individual surface. Right? Can I put all the receptacle outdoor? With the receptacle indoor, as long as it exceed the 13 or 6 uh, design, yes. Is it a good idea to put the CFO's office receptacle with the receptacle outdoor? So if there's a rain and that trips, you lost the CFO's or the designer's uh, receptacle? No, bad idea. You have a receptacle that is outdoor, receptacle or receptacles, group them together based on no more than 6, and put them in one circuit. Maximum six. You might have to put two circuits, three, three on each side. That's fine. But maximum six outdoor, one receptacle, one circuit. Can I, as I said, feed the outdoor receptacle with the indoor and count them six? Yes. Is it a good idea? No. Bathrooms. Can I feed the bathroom receptacle from the receptacle that feeds the next office of Michelle Kool Erickson? There's nothing wrong with that. Is there not anything wrong from the count six? Put them. Is it a good idea? One of them trip from a maintenance. Remember, guys, we're going to design a building that 50 years from now, people are going to maintain it. That's a good designer, good engineer is going to think. How am I going to design a building that people will maintain it fully for 50 years from now? Keep this in mind when you put your design. Not like I'm going to do cheap cut, cheap cut, I put the whole, all the lights here and all the receptacles, and I can put them in two circuits <laughs> and make it work. <laughs> we're designing a building that's going to fully function efficiently for 50 years from now from now until 50 years at least. That's in the back of your mind as a designer it's gonna be. Okay, any question guys about the, I call them areas. So this is where you use your judgment, you know? Should I put, for example, the hallways? Should I put the hallways in one circuit? I would, I group all the hallways, receptacles, up to six and put them in one circuit. Offices, group all the offices up to six and one circuit. Um, you know what I mean? See, these are where the areas are gonna be start thinking area-wise, area-wise. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my uh, example, guys, before I move into the light. And I, I'm going to add here, uh, just to, here's my, I'm, I'm going to do these receptacles. I have three of them, and I pull them in one circuit. This is outdoor, outdoor. Can I drop these outdoor with these receptacles? Yes. Is it a good idea? No. This is another um, two conductors number 12. Now, when you go outdoor, I want to warn you, you might have to go, depending how far you go, you might have to up to, 12, to 10 for voltage drop. But we're assuming outdoor meaning just feeding the Christmas and holiday lights right next to the exit doors and so forth. That's what we outdoor meaning. All right. Let me go to lights. Any questions guys before I move to lights? Receptacles are easy. So moving forward, how many receptacles in? And we're going to circuit six receptacles. Anywhere in the commercial building, no more than six. Individual circuits for individual equipment when we know where they're located. Um, certain areas, give them a circuit, even though the bathroom, for example, we have two bathrooms. How many receptacles in each one of them? Two, one in each. There are two receptacles, they're going to have one circuit. Yeah, good idea. You know I mean, even though there are two receptacles having one circuit. Does that make sense? You're saying Put them both on the same? Yeah, both, both in the same, yeah. If you have two, when I say bathrooms, I mean group them. So if I have 12 bathrooms, but I don't like to put more than six in one circuit, though, anywhere in a commercial. So if I have 12 bathrooms, one receptacle per bathroom, I have I need two circuits. I mean, now, would it be wrong if I add one circuit per bathroom? Yes, I think it's a little bit overkilling, personally. But no, 12, receptacle, 12 bathrooms will give you how many receptacles? Uh, we need six per, per circuit? Yeah, two circuits. Highly unlikely you're going to have 12 bathroom areas with 
you know, usually you have one bathroom area in a commercial building or two with one receptacle on the countertop. Um, uh, yeah, multi-tenant and yeah. That's a, again, these are, you can go this and that, but these are my humble opinion, just suggestions. Can I go to lights? Lights are cool. Can I go to lights, guys? We did receptacle circuits. Any question about receptacle circuits? Moving on, William, my friend, when you guys go to Revit, that's what you, the recommendation they're going to be doing. Unless they tell you more strict than that. Okay, so six, we had six receptacles per circuit and individual circuits and areas. These are the three things. Number two, lights. Lights are interesting. Number two, light. Lighting circuits. Okay, now lighting circuits, how many, unlike receptacles, lights, we really have no idea what the volt amp of the lights yet, right? Do we know? Because we haven't installed them yet. Do we know what the uh, volt amp for uh, lighting circuit? I want to remind you, this is also a 20 amp circuit. We're moving with a 20 amp circuit. Lights, we're moving, everything that we're moving now, 20 amp circuits, moving on. 20 amp circuit lights. Here's what you should do, the calculation, they will tell you what the rule of thumb. The calculation is, uh, let's go, I have a 20 amp circuit. I want to remind you how many amps I'm going to be able to take out of this 20 amp because I grouped them. 15, not 16. So I'm going to take my 15 amp, multiply it by my voltage 120, multiply it, okay? Uh, what, what do you get this, Chris? 15 amp times 120. 1800. 1800 volt amp. Ashley, this is your limit on a branch circuit now. This is your limit. By the way, if you're not grooving, Phil, if you're not grooving and you're doing cables, say, Chad, I'm not grooving. So what, what would this number be if you're not grooving? 16. Because you can't pull more than on a continuous load. Lighting is continuous. Continuous load, I'm going to emphasize, lighting is continuous. Continuous load, so you can't pull more than 80% on a circuit breaker. So I only lost one amp when I grouped them. Cool. How how am I going to do it, Chad? How many circuit? How many lights am I going to do? Here's how I'm going to do it. The long way. You're going to start adding volt amp one plus volt amp two plus volt amp three plus equal or less than 1800. So, Nick, you're going to start take this volt amp. This one is 88 volt amp plus 88 volt amp plus 50 volt amp plus uh, 120 volt amp. Add them all up and make sure you don't exceed the 1800 volt amp. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't do that. That's how we technically we should do it. Here's my rule of thumb. Okay? So that's how technically we have to do it. We have to find the volt amps. Right? And make sure you don't exceed the 1800 volt amp. <laughs> All right, so I hope you wouldn't do that though. Here's what I do. In a commercial building, in a commercial building, guys, typically, typical commercial building, typical light that you use, on average, my idea, on average, my idea, CSK, um, 100 volt amp is the typical maximum that you can do in all these two by fours. Average. You know, some of them might be 120, some of them might be 80, some of them might be 50. A good, for my judgment, a good value to use if you don't know what the fixture is, a hundred volt amp. Okay, design. So that based on this design, so then we take, we take my twenty amp again. I'm going to do my design based on fifteen amp multiplied by one twenty divided by a hundred volt amp. All of them on average hundred volt amp. And what is this came to be? CSK, disclaimer. So I put the disclaimer next to it. <laughs> so you know if it's uh, CSK is my initial. How many, how many you can do based on this? How many? 18. 18 fixtures. 18 fixtures. So grab this. How many fixtures do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. I can put all these in one in one, uh, in one one circuit. Here's where we become smarter, though. 
where you can grab two circuits, you feed half of these room on one circuit, and the other half in a different circuit, and you go to the different room and feed the other half of the other room in one circuit. You know what I mean? So you stagger them. You have two circuits coming to every area, and you pick half of the light in this area, and this circuit, half of the other circuit. That's a, the best way of doing it. But 18 fixtures on a 20 amp, 120 volt system. Questions? Huh? B10? With B? Did you do the math right? Did I do the math right? Divide by 100, right? Oh, you made me question myself. Divide by 100. 18, right? Right? 18. Did you get your milk this morning? No, I was <laughs> That will make a difference. Okay. Now, the assumption, Ashley, is the voltage is 120 here. It's not 208, which is 99% of the time, guys. If you have this system, you're burning them at 120. If you're burning them at 208, the voltage will be different. The number will be different. So keep in mind, these are burning at 120 volt, and they're all 20 amp circuit. So on every 20 amp circuit, how many fixtures are you going to throw? 18. Now, if, if Nick is going to say, Chad, you're a knucklehead, I'm going to go with the typical way. At 20 amp, I'm going to add all my volt amps and see, I might be able to fit 30 of them. If I have tiny little lights, guys, that becomes uh, interesting. You have decorative lights, and each one of them is a 20 volt amp. I wouldn't use this rule. I would use the rule at the top and add the volt amp, volt amp, volt amp, volt amp. Make sure you don't exceed what? The 1800 volt amp. Okay? Any question, guys? But a general lighting building like you guys are doing, you have no idea what the light yet. So this is a good rule of thumb to start with. 18 questions. So we go back to my light. Here's my lighting. Now remember, in my lighting circuit, guys, here's my lighting circuit. I'm going to put 18. One, two, three, all the way to 18. And what do you do with them? Circuit them. They're going to come bam, 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 all the way. And this, what's the number? Two conductors number 12. Done. Here's your lighting circuit. How many of them? 18. These are 18. How many did we say outdoor here? Well, this one we said six here. This one, only one. This one, no more than six. Come on, buddy. So I put my lights. Again, these are lights. L, 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 L lights. Cool? Questions? Can I use 30 lights on a 20 amp circuit? Yes, if the volt amp is less than what we just talked about. This is general light. We don't know. We're going to start 18. You have to start somewhere. Okay. This is for 2A. I'm going to call these guys a 2A. These two are 2A. I'm going to go to B. B is the parameter lights, right, and the parking lot lights. The parameter lights and the parking lot lights. That's almost the different lights that you can have. The, everything here is indoor lights. All these are indoor lights, typical. 18 of them. I'm going to go to B. Which B, parameter, parameter lights, lights. Parameter lights, guys, the same rule, the same calculation that we do. Almost all of them. You don't want to put more than, uh, uh, well, usually they're 100 volt amp on average. These are just decorative lights around. If you put more than that, it floods in the neighbors and they'll probably shoot you. So don't put more than 18. The same thing, 18 max, unless you know the volt amp. Parking lot, BC, parking lot. Parking lot on average, typical, and a 20 amp circuit, guys. Here's the rule for it. You take uh, the 15 amp, remember, multiplied by 120, divide this one by typically 250 volt amp. Typical 250, typical. They use 250 lighting fixture, typical. Again, typical. If you're more than that, please adjust it. So what would that give you, please? 250? Seven. 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 Typical. 
parking lot cubicle seven based on 250. 250 is a lot of volt amps. You go higher to 400, obviously, it's going to, the calculation will be different. But that's really typically what we do in the parking lot. They, we know all of them are the same size. The worst thing that could happen to you to have a parking lot with one, one lamp is 250, the other lamp is 400. God, maintaining these equipment, you're going to have to carry more two different type of bulbs. Standardized. Don't you use higher voltage typically for the longer run? Um, well, you can. You can use 28. If you use 28, it's different. You don't have to. But the challenge is the conductor will be different. I'm going to we'll see the conductor in a second. So 7, 7, number 18. Any question guys about this? So let me go back to my conductor. My conductor is here. Now I'm going to go to my parking lot here. My parking lot, and I put how many of them maximum might? Maximum 7. The conductors, here's where you get into the conductor parking lot. Typically, you're going to go to conductors number 8. 8. Number 8. Why? Voltage drop. So when you go outdoor, guys, smaller, you know what we do in a bigger parking lot? We do one odd. We take one odd, different voltages. Typical, you don't, don't go when you go to a parking lot, throw number 8. If you are cheap, Put number 10. Don't go number 12 outdoor. Don't go number 12 outdoor. The parking lot, especially parking lot. I'm going to say here parking lot, right? One. So you take number eight with two conductors. Again, there's a ground involved. And go all the way and pick them up. Okay. So we got the lights under our belt. We're done. The rest is really the hardest thing, guys, is number three that you're going to see Chad doing here. It's going to be very easy. Number three. I'm going to say motors. Motors. The hardest one was light. How many lights did we say we're going to put? 18. How many receptacles? Six. Done. The motors are very easy. I'm going to use the air handling unit in your example, as an example. Air handling unit. Because that's a motor load, right? <clears throat> now, motor, um, these are the motor loads. And you know, they're always, almost always given. <clears throat> these are given given and almost always three phase or could be single phase different voltages you're going to see how it's going to be different voltages <clears throat> okay so before I um before I do that I'm going to use um one example that we have I have a two horsepower boiler pump one I'm going to use boiler pump one guys boiler Pump number one. <clears throat> this is given boiler pump number one as two horsepower at 208 three phase. Right? You guys have it. Typical motor load. <clears throat> What's the full load of, uh, of this uh, two horsepower at 208? We're going to go to the table, find the full load current like we did for motors, guys. You're probably familiar with that more than anything else. We're going to go to article 430. Um, I, I just want the amps because I'm sizing conductor here. Uh, but what if I don't trust you? Oops, then you're in trouble. <laughs> so what is it? Two horsepower, 7.5. Thank you, Chris. Um, then you take the 10, ho the 10, what is it, 10, Chad? Two horsepower, take it to 430 dot 250. 250 table under the voltage 208 that will give you a seven and a half right uh, press seven and a half amp. you start with the amp from the NEC code book that's a four, the most important thing amp from the NEC code book most important thing okay so we got the amps the second thing there is that we need to do is that we need to size the over temperature device so we're going to take the 7.5 99% of the time, guys, we're using inverse type circuit breakers on these. Inverse type circuit breakers is 2.5. So you're going to go 2.5. Chris, you're going to help me with this. And if anybody knows where, where does this coming, where is the 2.5 coming from? Table 250.52. 250.52. Okay. 
Chris, do you have your calculator handy? What's the uh, 2.5 uh, 2 times 7.5? 56, 18.75, 18.8 amps, okay? Then you're going to take this one to 240.6, what's the next standard? 20 amps. 20 amps, I got the 20 amp circuit. Make sense? Now, Remember, guys, what I said for smaller equipment, if, the, if you can fit them with a 20 amp fill or, or number 12 conductor, you can group them. So can I group this one if I want to with the receptacle circuits? And yeah, why? 20 amp circuit and the conductors are definitely going to be number 12. Let's do the conductors. And you guys who have done a lot of calculation for motors, that's typical. So it's, it's a 20 amp circuit. You're going to go stick a 20 amp circuit. How many poles, though? Three poles, 20 amp circuit, three pole. The last thing I want to do is the conductor. Um, the branch circuit conductor. How do you, when you're using One the point. terminology, how do you distinguish between a single handle three pole and one that's tied? If it's a three phase good design, if it's a three phase system. No, just the vernacular, nomenclature. What do you call it? Do you call them both three poles or is one of the three poles something? Uh, well, ah, the one that you have to say is three phase circuit breaker. If you say a three phase circuit breaker, a three pole circuit breaker, that's the, the terminology. If you say three otherwise, three yeah, three pole circuit breaker. Because you can have four pole. Yes, sir. Go back. Okay. Yeah. 250 by 52, the overcome detection device, multiplier. Did you guys come up differently? 250, and not, what 250 said? Why don't you guys correct me? Four, I'm sorry, four, 30.52, there you go. Thank you. Now we can read it. 430.52, can you read it, Chris, now almost? 430.52, thanks. 430.52, you're absolutely right. Times 2.5, get your 20 amp circuit. Cool? Auto depot. Let's do the conductors. Uh, Nick, did you have a calculator handy? 1.25 times 7.5. Chris? 1.25 times 7.5 equal 9.4 9 amps. 9.4 amps, take it to V10.15, V16, under 75 degree column. You're going to you're gonna end up with number three conductors, with three phase number 14. And what did Chad say? Never ever put number 14 here, so you're going to up it to what? Number 12. Okay? You go to 310. Dot 15 because they're motor under 75, you end up with number 14. But do we use number 14 in a commercial building? No. So it has number 12. Can I group these with the uh, lighting and receptacles? Yep, you can if you want to. Is it a good idea to group them since they're small? Yes. If they're in the same area, yes. But there's one little problem. They're not coming from the same panel, though. So I can't group them even if I want to. <laughs> Because they're not coming from the same panel. So I'm going to go and draw that one right here, back, back. If you guys look at the requirement that we have, our requirement says that we have this have to be this baby, two horsepower, um, boiler, pump number one. My conductor is three conductors number. Well, done. Why did I put them in the mechanical panel, not in the lighting panel? Well, lighting, it makes, doesn't make sense to put in lighting. Why not in the receptacle panel? I could put them in any of these panels. Why did I put them in the mechanical panel? Because the SPIC says so. Why would the SPIC say so? Because it makes sense. If it's three-phase mechanical panel, throw them in the main panel, unless you have a mechanical panel. Any question, guys? So we threw 
How many poles are these, by the way? This one will be three pole. Three pole. 20 amp three pole circuit breaker. 20 amp three pole circuit breaker. I have one more load and I'm done. One more type of load, then I'm done. Now, all the motors, uh, Rob, my friend, you're going to do them the same thing. The branch circuit, same calculation. They might be coming from the receptacle panel, but the same calculation. Okay? All right, so just to for the heck of it, for motors, um, because we have little loads here, um, I'm just going to pick one little thing and then I'll, I'll move on. Uh, by the way, any tiny little loads, just 20 amp circuit number 12. 20 amp circuit number 12. I'm going to take um, a tiny little load here. This is uh, exhaust. exhaust fan. Yeah, thank you, exhaust fan. Here's another example. Example two, exhaust fan number one. The load on it is a quarter, uh, one quarter horsepower. And it's running at one one at one twenty volt. You can do the same calculation, guys. I uh, the quarter is five and a half, as a matter of fact. So you take um, five point eight times two point five. The five point eight is the full load current. I'm doing it right away here. Five point eight. So five point eight times two point five equal fourteen point five amp. You go next to the next standard is what? 15 amp. I personally wouldn't put a 15 amp. I I know this is almost kind of violating the code here. It's a 15 amp circuit breaker. I usually throw a 20 amp circuit there. On they're tiny little um, exhaust fans, so they have their own protection. I know this is violation of the code here. Just to stick with the 20 amp. I put I make this one 20 amp to stay standardized. Then that's just the over capacitor device. Then the conductor, 1.25 times 5.8. What would that give you? 1.25 times oops, 1.25 times 5.8. That give you 7.3. 7.3. If you go to the code, that will give you two conductors. Number 14. Would you put number 14 in a commercial building? Not if not if I'm designing it. So you're gonna have two conductors, number 12. So what I would do personally is I'll up this one to 20 amp and put number 12 conductor and size based on number 12 <laughs> conductor and yes sir. Very good point. Only because it's a motor. Look how we size that. When we size the breaker, look, the multiplier for the breaker was very high. You always have to do this one for a motor because this happened to be the same. But if this, suppose that was 100 amp, the conductor will be huge if you match it to the overcompletion device. For motors, guys, always that overcompletion device is sized completely different than the conductors. Yes, you have. That's my answer is yes, you have. We have it to match here. Because the smaller size, bigger conduct conduits um, um, will be completely different. I don't know where they're using it. The last bringing air out and so. Should I put them on two circuits? Should I put them in two? I wouldn't. Yeah. You can. You typically you can. Then you do the calculation, but. Uh, but if you do the calculation, the first one 15, and you're going to add, take this. If you do this, do them in the tool, over capacitor device is 15, add another 5.8 to it, you exceeded the rating of the over capacitor device. So you might have to put a 25 amp circuit breaker on them. They, they say, yes, you can. But you have to do calculation. I personally would throw a dedicated circuit for them. 20 amp circuit, go feed them, pick them up. 
So what, what, here's what I would do though. I would take two huts and a neutron, shared neutron, go feed them. Here's a three wire conductor and feed them. So I'm gonna go back to my exhaust fan. By the way, the exhaust fan, the way we're doing it in the project is coming actually from the receptacle panel. The exhaust fan is coming from the receptacle panel. So here's my exhaust fan, a uh, quarter of an inch, number 12, Two. The exhaust fan is coming from the receptacle panel. Why? Because I can't, they're not as allowing me to use the main, and I don't put it on the lighting because it's not light. So the only option I have is, uh, yes, sir. Wait, what? Yes. It's not allowed to be, if it's not allowed to be in the main, and you can't put it in the lighting, where would it be? Well, right here. If you guys go to 6.1.10, it will tell you what's need to be fed from the main panel. Anything that's not listed to be fed from the main panel, you have to feed it from somewhere. Where are you going to feed it? Either lighting, and you agree with me, an exhaust fan is the last thing you can get closer to a light, right? Not a lighting load, very clear. Then the only option is receptacle panel. Okay, HVAC equipment, then I'm done. Okay, any question guys about these? We have two examples where, where one three phase, one single phase. Two examples, one three phase, one single phase, as you can see, and we, we calculated them. The last thing I'm gonna take in HVAC, I'm gonna go to the chiller. I have my chiller, I'm gonna use calculate, calculate for the chiller. So this will be number, in my numbering here, number uh, three, number four. Number four. I'm going to go to number four. Number four. H back. Webman, mainly, mainly cooling. Cooling. Heating is easy. Cooling. And this will be article 440, the one that has compressor, the one that has compressor. I'm going to use the example that we have in, in, in us, guys, and have a brand circuit for it. The example, Chris, that we have is a chiller. We have a, condens a condensing unit. So here's my example. I have a condensing unit given to me, and my condensing unit, based on the spec that we got from Mr. Engineer, I have a rated load amp of of 81.6 amps. I have a voltage of 208 volt, and I have a three-phase system. That's all I know about this HVAC equipment. Okay? These are given. Condensing unit. Condensing unit. And I'm pulling this information, guys, from your spec. Condensing unit from the spec that you have. Okay, so that's our last example from this unit. And if you guys do me one little favor, for the condensing unit, I pulled this info also on page 18. Page 18 has cut sheets about the condensing unit. Condensing units are weird. They have to, we go by the manufacturer, what the manufacturers tell you to do. So I want you guys to go to page 18. If you go to page 18, it has two things. It says minimum circuit intensity and maximum overcome friction device. So I want to say um, this spec page number 18 give you the following. If you guys go there, maximum overcurrent protection equal. If you guys look at that, well, the maximum overcurrent protection device is 60, no, it's uh, 110. 110 amp. And minimum circuit, minimum circuit ambicity is uh, 91 amps, 91 amps. All this info here is given, given. All this info is given about the equipment, given. You don't mess with it, given. They're giving me the, full, the rated load amps, which is full load amp, the voltage and the phase, the spec, page number 18, 
If you go there from this bit, you can pull maximum over competition device and uh, minimum circuit ambicity. And minimum circuit ambicity. Okay? They're actually saying a fuse here, maximum fuse. And we're using circuit breaker. And if you guys look at the bottom, Phil, if you look at the bottom of the sheet, it says or hacker circuit breaker. So they are, they're giving us, because I'm using circuit breakers, I can't use a fuse in a circuit breaker panel. Where are you going to fit it? It doesn't fit. So if you look away at the bottom, it says, oh, by the way, you can put hacker the same size. Okay, very easy. This is very easy, guys. So step number one, then when you get there, then I need to size the overcurrent protection device, which is the circuit breaker for this system. It's already given. Don't do anything. One cat. It's 110 amp. Done. Don't even miss with it. So I need 110 amp circuit breaker. And by the way, next to it, please put hacker. Hacker. Is that what we spell it? Or A R. Hacker. There's a H A C R. H A C R. There is no A. Other H yeah. The other one. Hacker. Heating air conditioning rated. Specially designed circuit. A lot of a lot of circuit breakers guys see hackers. People look at them. Means they can handle the characteristics of a, a, a compressor. Okay, done. My overcompetition device is done. Look how easier it, it is. Then the conductors, uh, branch circuit conductors. Branch circuit conductors, you don't multiply by anything, anything. Since you already have, you take the maximum circuit ambicity, which is 91 amp, take it to 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column. Chris, would you please give me the conductor size? Number three. Number three. How many? Three phase. Three phase. So I have three conductors. Number three. A, W, and G. All the HHN. We're indoor. And, and that one is that? This, then, then will be THHW. THHW. We're outdoor. This is an example of a load. Ashley, that you would never group. You would never group this load with other receptacles. Would I group number three conductors with the number 12 conductors and ask the electrician to pull them? Can I do it, by the way? Yes. Is it a good idea to group them? No. Okay, so I want to go back and uh, 110. And these are coming, by the way, from the spec that we have. It's coming directly from the main panel. So here's my main panel. I'm going to go all the way to here and I have my uh, condensing unit number one and um, um, and it's a three phase um, well, and the conductor uh, first was three conductors number three yeah. number three um, and the overcapitation device here unlike I'm showing for that baby here the overcompetition device right in here, I'm going to put it right here, was 110 amp. And how many poles? Three poles. Three poles, right next to it. Three poles, 110 amp. Three pole, three phase circuit breaker, not tied together. You can trip both together, going and feeding this condensing unit. Any question, guys? Now, would I group the conductors of condensing unit with anything else? I can, bad idea, bad idea. Any question? So what I gave you guys an example of receptacle, how to circuit for receptacles, how to circuit for lights, right? And how to circuit for motors and how to circuit for HVAC equipment. We're done. There's one heater I want to throw here and then I'm done. One heater, tell me. This is the third broken problem. That, this one is not going to be broken. Just want to add a heater. Any question guys about that one? So you see how we do the HVAC equipment? Now, Ashley, we have a future condensing unit. What are you going to do with the future condensing unit? Exactly the same. Same sizing. Exactly the same sizing. Well, much smaller, 
Yeah, I mean uh, the same process, not the same, the same process. I should be more clear. Okay, for HVAC equipment, guys, this is the condensing unit. Is one HVAC equipment that you will encounter. I'm going to call it E. How about heater? What if you have a heater? You have heaters, right? There is a bunch of heaters that they're throwing all over. That's also heating equipment, HVAC. Um, right? Don't we have a heater? Unit cabinet heater. Unit cabinet. They, they just say these are horsepower motors. We did that one. Yeah, these are the unit heaters, guys. They have a horsepower, meaning the heating element is gas and the horsepower is just a fan. Okay? I'm going to do an exam, which is easy. If it's a horsepower, what do you do? <laughs> we just calculate. It's a motor. I'm going to do one with not without a B. I will do one just heating out B. How about a heater, electric heater? Electric heater. Suppose that I have an electric heater of 30 kW. I'm burning electricity at 208 3 feet. Right? That could be electric heater. Just throw heat in the building. No pump, nothing. Just conductive heat or whatever, induction heat or whatever you want to call it. Okay, in a case like this, it's continuous load. So here's what you need to do. I equal for this heater, 30K. By the way, the KWKV is the same, multiplied by 208. Don't forget the 1.73. We're gonna find the full load M of this baby. So 30 divided by 208. Divide by 1.73. That would get me 83 amps, this. 83.3 amps. Okay. Then I need to find uh, branch circuit conductors. It's a continuous load. It is a continuous. Continuous load. So what do you do with a continuous load? 1.25 multiplied by 83.3 times... 1.25 that will get me get me uh 104 right 104 amp then you take the 104 104 to what's the next standard 240.6 110 110 on the one second. I will put, I will do the conductor first. So you take the 104 conductor then, it's a bright circuit, to 310.15 B16, under 75 degree column. I want to size the conductor first. Um, how many conductors? So three phase. So three conductor, number, number one, Chris, number two, number two, A, W, G. I have two conductors. The last thing, thing I want to do is overcurrent protection device for the branch circuit. Branch circuit need an overcurrent protection device. Same calculation. 1.25 times 83.3 equal 104 amps. This is what you take it to 104. Take it to 310. Dot, um, take it to where? To 40.6, and that will give me 110M. Done. Now this is done for good. Any question, guys? You have an electric heat, a heating element. The element is heat. Unless the, the, the manufacturers tell you what they want conductor-wise, that's how we're going to do it. Uh, now, no, we're going to have, this is dedicated conduit for it. Yeah, yeah, the three quarters are no, definitely three quarters. So I'm going to go back. Chris, give me the size of that. So I have a heating element here um, coming from in here. That was um, 30, oops, that was 30 kVA, 30 kW heater. The conductor size was three conductors, Chris, number, uh, number two, yeah, number two. And the overcapitation device right in here was 110 amp three four. Yeah. 
right here, but you can't see it, buddy. Oops. So I have to, that's right here, 110 M. All right. Any question, guys? That's it. This will cover you for any, almost any type of um, commercial load that you're going to encounter. Would I group anything that conductor is less than more than number 12? No, not a good idea. Any question, guys? Chris, this is a little bit better than what the guy did mix them up well, I think. No. Yeah, but but that's how I explain the branch circuits when we go to us. Any question guys about this? So just to recoup, what we did, my friends, is uh, we took multiple panels and we fit receptacles, we fit lights. Branch circuits for receptacles, branch circuits for lights, branch circuits for motors, branch circuits for HVAC equipment, especially the cooling equipment, the ones that has condensers, and also a heater. And we said that if you have receptacle, so branch circuits and lighting branch circuits and equipment branch circuits less than number 12 or less, good idea to group them. Otherwise, dedicated conduit to the load. If you are working for an electrical contractor, and hopefully that will help in terms of grooving them. If you work for Michelle Cool Erickson, you might not never get involved in in, um, in grooving and all this stuff, guys. You know, we just dedicated, but that will help you with how to design and size. 18 lights on one circuit, and how many receptacles on one circuit? Six. Equipment will have its own branch circuits. We don't put less than number 12. Conductor and listen to number 12 20 uh, over competition device. Circuit, branch circuit, minimum 20 amp and number 12 and good to go. Any questions? Ashley, is that a lot for Friday? Okay, we'll stop here. Now that's it. Thank you guys.